Hello children, in this video we will be doing the chapter Humidity and Clouds. So children, what is humidity? Humidity is the amount of water vapour present in the air. As we live near the coastal area, that is in Mumbai, you might have noticed that when the heat increases, we feel the stickiness due to the heat and water vapour present in the air. And you already know about what are clouds. In this chapter, we will learn the different types of clouds and their features. Now children, observe these pictures in front of you. What do you notice in them? In the first picture, you can see that the two people are having a conversation. So, by looking at the picture, you might have noticed that the area or the surrounding that they are in is a desert type. So, the weather there is hot. So, children, this is Rajasthan. Rajasthan lies in a region with dry and hot air. There is hardly any moisture in the air. People wear loose and cotton clothes. In the second picture you can see that the two men are talking amongst themselves and are feeling very hot. So this is Mumbai. The air is hot and humid. There, the proportion of moisture is very high in the air. In addition, if dark clouds cover the sky, the content of moisture in the air increases. So children, the next picture, what do you observe in it? You can see that children are playing with the snow and that they have worn woolen clothes. So children, this is the Kashmir Valley that lies in a region with cold and dry air. Moisture is very less in the air. People cover themselves with warm clothes. So children, the words hot, moist, cool, etc. show the condition of the air. They relate to the content of the moisture in the air. Moisture is the air is invisible. But it is the major component of air which is taken into consideration while discussing the weather of any place. So, for precipitation, that is, for rainfall to occur in any place, presence of moisture in the air is very important. If there is no moisture in the air, then precipitation cannot take place. Now children, we will do evaporation. What is evaporation? Evaporation is the process of converting water into steam or water vapor. Because of the sun's heat, the water on the earth gets converted into water vapor. The process of evaporation is dependent on the dryness, temperature and the speed of the wind. If the air is dry and hot, the water or the rate of evaporation increases. The process of evaporation continues even in dry and cold air. On the other hand, evaporation occurs 
very slowly in moist air if the velocity and temperature of the air is high then evaporation occurs very fast but if the wind is blowing slowly and the air is cooler then evaporation occurs very slowly now we will do humidity in the air the proportion of water vapor in the air is called its humidity the dryness or dampness of the air depends on the proportion of water vapor air can hold moisture in specific quantity at specific temperature only as air cools down its moisture holding capacity reduces this implies that warmer air can hold more moisture than cold air at a certain temperature the moisture holding capacity of air becomes equal to the proportion of moisture present in the air so this condition is called as saturation of the air that means the quantity or the capacity of the air and the moisture that is present in the air is of the equal ratio so then this condition is called as the saturation of the air okay children this is an activity where there is a tray taken that is deeper in the center and a sponge is also taken there are holes made on the flat part of the tray and then the sponge is placed in the center of the tray in the second picture you can see that water is poured into the sponge little by little with the help of the spoon and in the third picture you can see that the sponge is fully wet with the water and now it cannot absorb any more water so children the water that was poured initially was absorbed in the sponge and while pouring the water on the sponge we expected that the water would come out or trickle out and when more water was poured on the sponge the sponge could hold the water so children after a certain limit the water holding capacity of the sponge comes to an end that is you might have noticed even in your regular activities or if you have played with sponge when you add more water to sponge then the moisture holding capacity or the water holding capacity of the sponge is over and then you can see in the picture that the water is coming out of the sponge so similarly when the proportion of moisture in the air okay exceeds its vapor holding capacity precipitation in the form of rain or snow occurs on the earth the moisture holding capacity of the air depends on its temperature higher the temperature higher is the holding capacity we have learned earlier that as we go to higher altitudes in the sky 
the air becomes cooler you might have noticed this whenever you go to mountainous regions that time the altitude is higher so you might have noticed that the environment is cooler which means the air is cooler so as per this rule as we go higher the vapor holding capacity of the air will decrease so children in front of you is a table in which the vapor holding capacity of 1 cubic meter of air in various temperatures is given so generally humidity of the air is measured in gra grams per cubic meter when the humidity in the air is 0 gram per cubic meter the air is said to be dry if the humidity in the air is 30 degrees celsius then the temperature is 37 grams per cubic meter then the air is said to be saturated so children if you are looking at this table then you can see that the first column is the temperature of the air that is a normal temperature the second column we have vapor holding capacity and in the third column we have the difference in the capacities so you can see the first row the temperature is in minus that is minus 5 and the vapor holding capacity is 3.26 as we go down the temperature comes into the positive side that is 0 degree celsius then similarly the water that is a vapor holding capacity also increases earlier it was 3.26 now when the temperature is zero that time the vapor holding capacity has increased to 4.85 in the same way you can see the difference in the capacities has also increased that is 1.59 so children if you look at the temperatures and the vapor holding capacity and also the differences in the capacities you can see that as the temperature increases earlier in the first row it was minus 5 then it was 0 degree celsius so if you compare to the lower temperature with the higher temperature that is 30 degree or 40 degree you can see that the vapor holding capacity increases with the increase in temperature that is when it goes to 40 degree celsius that is a temperature then the vapor holding capacity also increases to 51.12 so the difference is 20.75 at 15 degree celsius the capacity of 1 cubic meter air is to hold 12.8 gram of moisture if this amount of vapor is present in the air the air is said to be saturated this humidity in the air is expressed in different ways that is absolute humidity and relative humidity now let's do first the absolute humidity the amount of water vapor in 1 cubic meter of air is the absolute humidity that is humidity means that the measure that is the amount of water vapor that is present in the air without the temperature is called as the absolute humidity for example the absolute humidity of the air near coastal areas is higher then air in the interior absolute humidity is higher in the equatorial areas 
while it reduces as we move to the poles that is the cold region that is the north and the south poles the distribution of land and water on earth and the seasons also affect the absolute humidity next we will do the relative humidity so children what is a relative humidity the amount of water vapor that is present in the air can be calculated or expressed as a percentage of the amount needed for saturation at the same temperature and same volume so children relative humidity can be expressed in percentage like relative humidity that is rh is equal to absolute humidity upon vapor holding capacity into 100 so in this way we can know what is the relative humidity of a particular place the amount of water vapor changes according to the difference in temperature okay children like first when we did the absolute humidity there temperature did not play a very important role there only the amount of water vapor in the air is important but in relative humidity not only the amount of water vapor but also the temperature difference is necessary similarly relative humidity also changes generally relative humidity is more in the mornings and the nights in the afternoon as temperature increases relative humidity also decreases near coastal areas the relative humidity is more and so the air is moist in desert areas relative humidity is less so children here are some of the solves that is where you can find out the relative humidity by calculating the absolute humidity and the vapor holding capacity what will be the relative humidity of air whose absolute humidity is 20 g per meter cube and vapor holding capacity is 30 g per meter cube so children as i told you earlier that we can calculate relative humidity through absolute humidity upon vapor holding capacity into 100 so we have the absolute humidity that is 20 and the vapor holding capacity is 30 so 20 divided by 30 into 100 so here the relative humidity of the air is 66.66 percentage next is if the absolute humidity of the air is 15 g per meter cube and the vapor holding capacity is 15 g per meter cube then what is the relative humidity of the air so again we have put this that is relative humidity is equal to absolute humidity upon vapor holding capacity into 100 so the absolute humidity is 15 as well as the vapor holding capacity is also 15 so 15 divided by 15 into 100 is 100 percent so here the relative humidity of the air is 100 percent so children this means that the air in this solution is saturated why because the absolute humidity and the vapor holding capacity has become equal that is why the air is saturated in this 
solution. Now children, this is another activity where you need to take water in a pressure cooker. Then take off the whistle of the pressure cooker. Now take the cooker and heat it. Take a lid with a handle. After the water starts boiling, hold the lid at a distance from where the steam is coming out. So children, what do you think might have happened? So after conducting this activity, you might have observed that the water has changed into water vapor after it was heated. This vapor turns into water droplets when it touches the cooler lid. We can see the water droplets deposited on the lid. So you can see in the picture that when they remove the lid they saw some of the water droplets on the lids. In the next activity we need to take a glass with a flat bottom. Put some ice cubes in it and keep this glass in a room for two to three minutes. Now children what do you think might have happened? Here in some time you will see after this activity on the outer surface of the glass there are droplets of water formed. So when the water vapor in the air comes in contact with the cold surface then condensation takes place. These droplets form on the outer surface of the glass. In the first activity that we did, the steam from the cooker, that is the above activity, the steam in the cooker cooled and it condensed into water droplets. In the second activity, the vapor in the air condensed into water droplets. Next we will be doing condensation, densification and sublimation. So the process of changing of water vapor in the air into water is called condensation or densification. The process of vapor that is gas changing into solid state is called sublimation. If the temperature of the air reduces or comes down, its vapor holding capacity also comes down that is it reduces. When relative humidity of the air becomes 100% then vapor starts condensing. At this time the temperature of the air should be at the dew point. It implies that for condensation temperature should be low and relative humidity must be high. If the in the free environment condensation of the vapor in the air occurs around fine particles like dust, salt, etc. in the air. Dew, frost and fog are the forms of condensation at ground level while clouds are a form of condensation at the higher elevation that is at higher altitudes. Okay children, we will stop here for now. In the next video, we will be doing cloud and its type. Thank you for listening children. Take care.